May 18, 1980. The eruption of Mount St. Helens was the most catastrophic and destructive volcanic event in the history of the United States. Following two months of small earthquakes and steam venting, a magnitude 5.1 earthquake hit under the mountain, creating an avalanche that left a gap. The pent-up pressure erupted through the gap in a huge blast of pumice and ash that lasted nine hours. Fifty-seven people were killed, miles of forest land devastated. The eruption actually reduced the elevation of Mount St. Helens summit by nearly 2,000 feet and left a huge horseshoe-shaped crater. In the last decade, pressure has begun to build again under the mountain, creating a new lava dome. So scientists continue to closely watch this slumbering giant. Back again with Professor John Vidal, director of the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. Well, it's been about 30 years now since Mount St. Helens blew up. I remember that very, very well. Uh, we've seen activity in the last decade, more shaking down there. And, and other concerns about some of the other mountains around here, particularly Rainier. Well, all the volcanoes uh, are active in the Cascades, um, so Mount Hood, Glacier Peak, um, and we have instruments on all the volcanoes, and we can't really rule out much of anything. We just keep an eye on it, and luckily volcanoes give us much more reliable warning than earthquakes. So we think there'd be days or even weeks of activity before uh, any of those volcanoes actually erupted. Going back to Mount St. Helens, you mentioned to me that the, the landslide from that. Tell me about that. That's right. The landslide from St. Helens was the biggest we've recorded instrumentally globally. Um, there was just a huge volume of mass on the side of the mountain that came downhill, and in fact that's what allowed the eruption to be so violent. The sudden unloading and then out came uh, the eruption. Now, the connection to a volcano and an earthquake, is there a there strong connection? There's definitely a connection, but it's weak. Uh, so whenever we have a big earthquake, if there were magnitude 9 on the coast, for example, there's some chance some of the volcanoes might become active. Um, probably it wouldn't happen, and probably be minor activity, but there's definitely a possibility of a connection. Mount Rainier, uh, obviously a landmark that all of us love to see, but there are some dangers and concerns about it possibly having some activity at some point. That's one of the one or two most dangerous volcanoes in the country, and not because it erupts very often, but because it's above South Seattle, and it periodically has large landslides that can come right down toward Seattle, as well as some small chance it might erupt. So and we're watching that very carefully. And any others that you see as uh, imminent threats? Well, the ones near the cities. We watch Hood, and we try to watch you know, Glacier Peak. We, um, there's sort of all some low level of danger that we just have to keep an eye on. Uh, I mentioned that I, I grew up in central Washington. Uh, we have volcanoes. Mount Adams is over there. Uh, also, this kind of swarm effect. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, we have swarms of earthquakes. And you know, actually, we're working hard to understand swarms because we don't actually know what starts a swarm and what ends a swarm. There are theories of groundwater is percolating and lubricating the faults. Um, or maybe the faults kind of move silently and trigger a lot of little earthquakes in the region. Um, but it's an area of study. I wish we understood it better. Um, we just watch and uh, see what happens next when there's a swarm. Very quickly, as you study volcanoes and earthquakes and all of this, uh, what, what's your hope in trying to make some progress and being able to really pinpoint these things in the future? Well, we'd like to make some progress on the basic physics of earthquakes, you know, how much stress and what the fault looks like. We're also looking to try to make the community safer, you know, predicting what the patterns of damage might be and put out these early warning systems. And finally, we still have some hope we'll be able to predict earthquakes, although as time goes by, um, that's not such a likely possibility. Well, I hope it happens <laughs> sometime soon. <laughs> no, Professor John Vidal, Director of the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, thank you very much for uh, the great insights. Oh, you're welcome. All right.